This is our glycolysis podcast. So, glycolysis. That's the first step of the breakdown of glucose to extract energy for cellular metabolism. Mm-hmm. Um, it's in organisms that perform cellular respiration, which is all of them. Um, glycolysis is the first stage in this process. And it's also the metabolic pathway that converts glucose into pyruvate and the hydrogen ion, H+. The free energy released in this process is used to form the high-energy molecules ATP and NADH. And also another definition of glycolysis, um, it's a series of reactions that extract energy from glucose by splitting it into two, three carbon molecules called pyruvates. And pyruvates are very important. Coming up. Oh, yes. This you're is... No, 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 no. Yeah, there we go. So, yeah, this Great. is another diagram from basically going from glucose to pyruvate. Yeah. Um, the top part is the, is the part that takes in energy. The bottom part is the part that happens twice and the part that leads to a net gain in energy. To do Yep. Uh, so it's all dependent on oxygen availability. Um, also, some organisms can only do uh, uh, aerobic respiration. Some can only do anaerobic respiration. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Yes. So the pyruvate can be broken down by oxidization, all the way down to carbon dioxide in cellular respiration, making many molecules of ATP uh, anywhere between thirty to thirty-eight, uh, depending on. Um, how ideal circumstances are. Wait, how much time do we have? Keep going. And so. glycolysis, well, in glycolysis, NAD plus is super, super important um, because it needs to be able to turn NADH back into NAD plus to keep glycolysis going. Mm. Okay, and there are 10 enzyme ca- uh, catalyzed reactions that happen in glycolysis. Um, there's a first phase and a second phase. The first phase is energy required phase. The glucose molecule takes the phosphate group. You know what? I've said this part like okay, four say, or five times say, now. Just uh, and I'm just going to summarize it. Yes. Um, so the glucose pretty much just takes two phosphate groups from two ATPs from them to ADP. Then it goes through, becomes, uh, what's it called? Glycosyl high 3 phosphate. Well, one is a rich glycosyl high 3 G3P. And then the other's not, but it then converts back into G3P. So we got the G- two G3P at the end of this. That's the short of it, because I've said it several times. And I'm bored. Okay, so, I'm and then for- this is the diagram of the first part. Did, uh, look at the arrows. They're pretty. Okay, uh, and then the second phase is energy releasing. Another phosphate group is added to the G3P, which gives an electron to the NAD plus to make NADH and H plus. It is important to note that the respiration must find a way to produce NAD plus for this part. One, three, biophosphate. This rate, the product of the previous step has one of its phosphate groups removed by an ATP, producing, we should have fixed that, producing ATP and three phosphate groups rate, which makes the net energy negative one ATP. Three phosphoglycerate is transformed into two phosphoglycerate by the enzyme phosphoglycerate mutase. One water molecule is removed to create phosphophenylopyruvate. The last phosphate group is removed to create pyruvate and ATP, bumping the net energy to zero ATP. But since the process occurs twice per glucose molecule, the real net energy is two ATP. You also get pyruvate, which only matters, well, okay, it matters in pretty much everything, but it only actually produces energy if we're using aerobic respiration. Anaerobic respiration, um, at least for fermentation, pyruvate has no more actual purpose aside from the fact that it um, takes the electrons that produce. That's later, but in time. All right, and then this is the diagram of the second phase. Yeah. And then this is a list of all the important enzymes used in glycolysis. Can we go through them? Or not go through them? Aerobic respiration yes. occurs when oxygen is available. Wait, this is, had to have been five minutes here. My speed run wasn't that impressive at all. It occurs when oxygen is available, produces this carbon dioxide, and produces more energy than anaerobic respiration by a buttload. Um, we now have two pyruvate molecules, which must first undergo pyruvate oxidation, which adds a COA, SH, and an NAD. Okay. Oh, hi, didn't see you there. Time for the next part. Okay. Um, Aerobic, aerobic respiration. respiration. We already started this earlier, but the thing didn't allow us to record for that long, so we're starting it over without deleting that part because we're lazy. Occurs when oxygenation is available, produces carbon dioxide, produces more energy than anaerobic respiration. 
as I said previously, we have two pi I'm skipping this section. Um, the Krebs cycle occurs as after we get acetyl CoA, which produces ATP, carbon dioxide, and NAD plus and FEDH2. But most importantly, the NAD plus for So this is the Krebs cycle. Here it is. It's just a simplified version. And then anaerobic respiration, which is very important for glycolysis. Because when oxygen is not available or when there's not enough oxygen to go around or for things that just don't use oxygen, just don't perform aerobic respiration, produces something other than just carbon dioxide usually, although it can oftentimes produce carbon dioxide simultaneously. For example, alcohol fermentation does produce carbon dioxide as well as ethanol. Uh, two extremely common are products are ethanol and lactic acid. Lactic acid, at least in humans and other similar organisms, um, that the lactic acid goes into the bloodstream and then gets filtered through the liver. And what yes. the liver does is it turns it back into pyruvate, then performs aerobic respiration on it. Yes, but yeah. alcohol fermentation is cool. what we're going to be talking about. Yep. Without your liver, you'd be probably more tired. It doesn't probably be dead, but that doesn't matter. Uh, the, right. the entire point is energy comes from the liver when you work out. That's really weird. Well, no, that's not true. Well. Okay. Moving on. Uh, we started with two pyruvate molecules, but all the energy gained will have been gained during glycolysis because fermentation does not actually produce energy. It exists only to recover the NAD plus in order for glycolysis to continue. That's sweet NAD plus. A carboxyl group is removed from pyruvate, which is released as carbon dioxide, leaving behind acetaldehyde. This step is followed by the NADH, giving acetaldehyde an electron, which produces ethanol, and most importantly for glycolysis, NAD plus. Yes. Okay. A little, then, little, little mini graph. Yep. And then the last slide. Yeah. 